So now that I've got that background, it's going to give me a reference point for when I move the map around. Uh, and that's what I want to add in now. I want to add in this scrolling ability. So before I do that, I need to define a few variables for the game or for this program. So before I've got my images loaded in, I'll create a new section here and I'll add a comment to say define game variables. And in here, at the moment, the only ones I want to add in are just related to scrolling. I'll say scroll underscore left equals false. And I'll explain all these as I use them, but at the moment I just want to define them uh, to start with. And then scroll right equals false, scroll equals zero, and scroll speed equals one. Okay, so that's them defined. Uh, I'll explain them now as I start to use them. The main ones are basically scroll left and scroll right. So these are my triggers for being able to scroll, uh, scroll the screen. And that's going to happen when I press the left and right arrow keys. So I already have the section here where I take events. All I need to do is add in an additional event, which is looking for key presses. So this one, uh, I'll just add in underneath. I'll add a little comment saying keyboard presses. And this is just the same way as I did before. Over here, I was saying if event type equals PyGameQuotes, quotes, I was looking for a particular type of event. Now I'm going to look for a different type. So I still say if event dot type equals but this time it's a pie game dot key down all caps and this just basically means that it's recording or it's looking for a keyboard press so now if it's detected that i need to know which key is actually being pressed or rather i need to look for particular keys the ones i'm interested in just now are left and right i say if event dot key equals pie game dot k underscore left so if i press left then that means that i want the map to scroll left so i say scroll left equals true and then I can just copy this one down uh, indent that and just change it to k underscore right and here I'm saying scroll right equals true now I'm not ooh, that's not indented correctly now I'm not wanting to flip them around in here so what I actually want to do is add in an additional check so at the moment, this is just looking for keyboard presses. But what that kind of means is that as soon as I press the left arrow key, this scroll left variable will be set to true. And then I'm just going to be stuck, i.e. it's always going to be set to true. I have no way of setting it back to false. But in reality, as soon as I let go of the left button on the or left arrow key on the keyboard, I want this variable to be set back to false. And there's another type of event for that. So I just copy this down, add it in below. And this time the event is exactly the same, but now it's just key up. So this means that I've released the key from the keyboard. Now all I need to do is change these to false. So if the key that's been released is the left key, then scroll left is false, and the same for right. Now that I have these, I'm able to actually add in the scrolling. I like to keep the event handler at the bottom of the code, so I'm going to keep that down there. And above this, I will add a little section where I'll say scroll the map. And in here, I'm just looking for these two triggers, scroll left and scroll right. I can say if scroll left is true, then I just want to change the scroll variable, which is going to be the one that actually controls how everything is offset. I want to change it by five pixels. So I want to reduce that variable by five pixels because I'm moving in the left direction. And then I say if scroll right is true, and I do the same thing, but I change that variable in the positive direction. So I increase it by five. And now that I have these, so if I run the code, uh, press the left and right arrow keys, nothing happens. But the only thing I've got on the screen so far is my background. And I can now use this scroll variable to move that around. So I come back up to my draw BG function. And what I have all of these drawn in with an X coordinate of zero, I can replace that with scroll. Put in scroll in here. And replace all of these with scroll. I run this again, and what will happen is that I'll be scrolling in the wrong direction. So at the moment when I press right, the whole thing does move over to the right, but actually I need to be able to inverse the scrolling. So essentially when I'm pressing right, the background is moving right, but I actually want the background to move left even though I'm scrolling right. So it's a little confusing, but I just need to make all of these negative. So I add a little minus sign at the start of them all. And now I'm able to scroll in the correct directions. So of course you can see that everything goes pretty messed up. And that's just because I don't actually have anything to draw on there. The background has nothing there. There's no image. So I need to fix that 
uh, and also I need to add in some kind of constant looping. So when I get to the right hand side, this image has gone off the screen. I need to keep adding it in behind it. So I actually need more of these images to be drawn on. Uh, so the first thing I want to fix is that background. I need to add a background color and just fill it in all the time. And for that, I'll just define some colors up here. So I'll say define colors. And the only one I need for now is green. So I'll say green is, uh, and this is just a, it's not the actual RGB normal green. Uh, it's just one I played around with. And actually, while I'm here, I'll, I'll define a couple more. So white, 255, 255, and 255. And then red, I'll define, uh, but I'll make it slightly changed. So it's actually going to be like this. So now that I have this, what I want to do is at each iteration of my background, before I draw the images, I want to just fill the background with a color. So my screen, my display window, dot fill, and then in here you put in the color that you want to use. And I want to use green. So if I run this code again, you can see now it's actually poking at the bottom there. I have this green background, and when I scroll this, you can see now what's actually happening is really just the background image is moving along. So now I want to add in more of these images on the right hand side so they always just loop over. And for that, I'm just going to add in a for loop here. So I can say in here, for x in range. And so this range is just going to be however many times I want it to repeat. I'm just going to pick a number four, for example, and I can increase or decrease that if I, if I find that it's not enough. And I indent all of these, but now I need to know how wide these images are so that I can put next uh, the additional ones next to them. So actually, before I even do this, I need to measure the width. So I'll say width equals... Uh, they're all the same width, I believe, so I'll just say sky image and I'll say get underscore width. So that's going to give me a width for one of the images. That means that at each iteration, I can just multiply this x coordinate by the width. So at zero, it's not going to shift it over across, but at one, it's going to move over uh, by a width of an image. So here, just instead of just saying negative scroll, I'll actually add in another set of brackets, and in here, I'll take x which is my for loop range, multiplied by the width. And I just need to add that in before every one of my scrolls. So put that in here, and here, and here. And if I run this again, now I can keep scrolling to the right hand side and you see it's just the same thing. It, it looks kind of endless, but this is where my for loop stops. So I do basically have just the same images pasted one after another in this kind of sequence. Now on the left hand side, I don't actually want this to, this is my zero point. So I don't actually want to be able to just keep scrolling over to here because there shouldn't really be a world map on that point. So I just need to add a little stop when I get to that point. Uh, and that's quite easy. I just come down to where I've got my scrolling, but for scroll left, I can add an additional check and scroll is greater than zero. There you go. So now I can only scroll as far as the end of that screen. So it won't actually let me go past the, that game window. But one little feature that I want to add to the scrolling is to give it a little bit of a, of a depth perception is to make things scroll at a different speed. So at the moment everything moves together and it, it doesn't look that great to be honest. So if I come back up to my uh, draw background function, what I can do is add a little multiplier here. So I'll say minus scroll and I'll just multiply it by a value. So I'll say 0.5 for the sky image. So I actually wanted to, to scroll at uh, a slower rate. And then for this one, I'll say 0 0.6. And basically as I get closer, because remember these are supposed to be in order of distance. So sky is the furthest away and then pine two is the closest away. Uh, it's closest to. So then this one I will multiply by 0 0.7 and this last one I'll multiply by 0 0.8. So that means that they're actually all going to be scrolling at a slightly different speed. And if I run this again and I scroll, uh, it's still quite fast actually, but you can see that the mountain and the sky, they're, they're all scrolling at different speeds. Uh, and I think I know why it's all going so fast. I haven't f uh, limited the frame rate of this. So to do that, I'm just going to set up a couple of additional variables. So I'll set my frame rate, I'll say FPS is 60, so that's what I want to limit it to. And then I'll create a clock, so I'll say clock equals pygame.time.clock. And now I can go into my main game loop and right at the beginning, before I do anything, I'll just say clock.tick and the frame rate that I want is FPS. So if I run this now, yeah, that's way slower. That's a lot more manageable. 
So now you can much more clearly see, it kind of gives you a 3D effect of everything scrolling on top of each other. Uh, it's actually very slow. I want to be able to scroll a bit faster than this because there's going to be times where I want to get from one side of the level to the other quickly while I'm editing. So that is why I want to add an additional check. I'm going to add an extra event key and this is going to be the shift key. Now because I'm looking at the arrow keys, it makes sense to use the right shift. So I'm going to say R shift. So if the right shift key has been pressed, I remember I had a variable called scroll speed. So I'll say my scroll speed becomes set to 5. Uh, and if I let go of R shift, then I want to reset it back to 1. So we just add another check here for my key up section and we just set it back to 1. And now I can go up to my scrolling section where I'm actually controlling this scroll variable and rather than just automatically increasing or decreasing by 5, I can multiply that by the scroll speed. So because normally scroll speed is 1, that means that this is always typically going to be 5, but whenever I hold the shift key it's going to be multiplied by 5 again, so I'll scroll at 25 pixels. So let's try that. So I scroll normally, hold shift and everything moves a lot quicker. Now that I've done that, the next thing I want to do is draw on a grid because at the moment I can't really tell uh, what this is being split into and remember I'm going to be using this to create sort of tile based levels. So I'm going to create a new function called draw grid just underneath this draw background function. So I'll add a comment to say draw grid and I'll say define draw underscore grid and again this doesn't take any arguments so we'll just leave that uh, those brackets closed. Uh, and my grid is just going to be a bunch of horizontal and vertical lines so I'm just going to use a loop for it but before I can create this for loop I need to know how many lines I'm drawing so I need to define a few additional variables and so I come back up to where I'm creating these variables and just above these I'm going to add rows uh, so this one's in capitals because it's fixed it's constant I'm going to have 16 rows and then I want to know how many columns I'm going to have so my max columns or for this entire editor is going to be 150. So you can tweak this depending on the size that you want, but uh, for the game I've made, I've used 150 columns. Uh, the other thing I want to do here is work out the actual size of these individual tiles. Now, I have a screen height, and I know how many rows I want to fit into that height. So it goes to say that if I just divide screen height by rows, that's going to give me a, a nice size for, for each of these tiles. So I say here, tile size, equals screen height divided by divided by rows and I use floor multiplication here uh, division here so I've got two uh, forward slashes it just means that I'm, I'm going to get an integer value as opposed to a potentially a float value so now that these are defined I can go down to my draw grid function and I can start adding these in so first of all I'll say uh, vertical lines so as I said, this is going to be a for loop because it's just going to be a whole bunch of repeating vertical lines. So I'll say for C in range, uh, and my range just needs to take me all the way up to the number of max columns that I have. So I'll say max underscore calls, but remember, a for loop, whatever you put in the range, it goes up to the value just before this. So I actually need to add on plus one, and that will take me all the way to maximum columns. And then to draw anything onto the screen when Pi game, there's various commands, so you use pygame.draw, and then whatever you put after this is the shape it will draw. So you can put a rectangle or a circle. In this case, I want to draw a line. Then the arguments are going to be your display window, which is my screen, the color, which I've already defined as white. Uh, and then you have to give it a start and an end coordinate. So the start coordinate is going to be your X and Y, and then for the end coordinate, also an X and Y, and it just draws a line between the two. Now, because these are my vertical lines, the Y coordinate is just going to be always from zero down to screen height, but the X coordinate is going to be changing. So at each iteration of this for loop, the X coordinate has to be jumping over by my tile size. Because remember, the tile size has already been calculated. That's just how big each individual grid square is going to be. So in here, I say C, which is my iterator here, multiplied by the tile size. And that's my X coordinate and then zero for the y coordinate. So that's going to start at the top, and now I add my second one. So for the x coordinate here, it's going to be exactly the same because I just wanted to draw vertically down. Uh, the y coordinate is going to be my screen height. So that covers the vertical lines. Let's just copy all this down. 
and do the exact same thing for the horizontal lines. Change that to horizontal. So now the range is different because I'm going across the way. It's my rows that I'm interested in. So this stays the same. I'm still drawing lines, but now it's the X coordinate that's going to be fixed because I'm going from zero over to screen width, but the Y coordinate is going to vary with this C variable. So it's just going to be C multiplied by tile size. So over here, I can also change this to, uh, to go all the way across the screen. So screen width and the Y coordinate stays the same. Let's see multiplied by tile size. Okay, so that function is defined. Now I just need to make sure that I actually call it within the game loop. So just underneath draw BG, I say draw underscore grid. And if I run this now, there you go. So I've got this grid coming up. There are some additional lines here because remember this is iterating all the way to my maximum columns, which is 150. So it's actually drawing lines off the screen and into the distance all the way until the end. I will add a little panel over here because this is where my buttons are gonna go. So you're not gonna see these vertical lines uh, but essentially that's what's happening right now. So this is fine, but there's a little issue. As soon as I start to scroll, my grid stays where it is. And I don't want that because I want the whole world to move whenever I scroll. It's not really the background I'm interested in, it's the tiles that I'm gonna be putting in here. So this grid also needs to scroll. And I've already shown how to do that for the background. So it's quite straightforward. I just do this exact same thing here. I say that for my tile size, I add in minus scroll. So basically anytime I want something to scroll, I just add in this minus scroll value. Uh, so that's covered on the x coordinate of the vertical. And of course, the horizontal lines, well, they don't need to scroll because they're just going across the screen anyway. So if I run this again and I scroll to the right, you can see now the whole thing is scrolling. And these horizontal lines, it kind of looks like they're moving, but they're not. They're actually always just fixed. Uh, they're just growing across the screen width. But because the vertical lines are scrolling to the left, it kind of looks like these lines are chasing them. So that's it. I've now got this grid coming up. 